Hello, and welcome to another edition of Focus. I'm your host, Vernon L. Bowling. You know, hey, 40 years we've been presenting you Focus. We've been talking to various community leaders. We've been talking about different events. You name it, we've talked about it that affect the African-American community. And for all those 40 years, there's only been a few people who've been connected with Focus. And you know, I every now and then you'll hear me talk about Tony. Well, he's very, very important towards the show, getting it on the air, edited, shooting it, and doing everything else. And myself, who's been hosting it. But from time to time, we try to have other people who come on and show a little interest in doing it. One of those such persons are Fatima Halim. Fatima is a household word in the valley, Afrocentric, very connected to the community, and a lot of you know her. She's gonna be presenting shows, and she's gonna be until, still bring you things that affect the African-American community. So please, don't touch the remote. We're gonna be trying to stay up with the times. This and more when Focus continues. My husband was deployed in October of 2009. After he left, everything just felt like it sank. Just didn't really like life at the time. The hardest thing was just trying to figure out a new routine. When you're a military family, things like the arts really are extra here at ASU Gamage. The Arizona Lottery enables 200 military dependents to come to the theater three times a year. This is our way of saying thank you, and we can never say thank you enough. Planet Earth, the home of countless wonders, of almost 7 billion human beings, around 149 million square kilometers of Earth. Have you ever wondered how much of this area actually belongs to you? Twenty-two thousand square meters. That's your share of the Earth. An anonymous piece of land. Well, not anymore. What if you could locate it, own it, protect it, visit it, turn it into a gift? That is what we do at YES. We try to bring the Earth closer to your heart. My winning streak in life didn't begin with a ranch I'd always imagined. It didn't begin when I bought my very first horse. Or with a 10-gallon hat I was thirsting for. It began with a hope and a dream. And, of course, that wonderful winning ticket. The Arizona Lottery. You can't win if you don't play. Many of us wonder what to do with our money. Well, at least some of us do. Some of us are philanthropic in different types of ways. Some of us allow people into our homes and we take good care of them. Some of us spend our money on, on others other than our family and we don't realize that that is a form of philanthropy. Well, today, we're going to meet some people who really understand what philanthropy is all about because they started the Black Philanthropy Initiative, and I'm very happy to be here with them. Thank you, and you welcome here today. Well, well, welcome me here today, because I'm in your space, right? <laughs> welcome to our yeah. space. And this is very, very exciting. Michael and Kiva, you are the two that are behind the Black Philanthropy Initiative. Can you tell me what it's all about? Well, let me, let me give you some idea of how this started. Um, one of my mentors is Gene Fairfax. And Jean Fairfax was a board member of the Arizona Community Foundation before she rotated off. Jean mentored me onto the board along with Vern Smith. And once I came on the board, Jean 
had a philosophy about, and it took about five years, she had a philosophy about how do we start to generate black dollars? Now, everybody knows money is green, but black dollars from her um, vision related to African Americans providing resources to support African American initiatives. And after about five years, uh, we were able to develop enough resources and interest at the, Afri at the uh, Arizona Community Foundation board and got the support of the full board to establish the Black Philanthropic Initiative in 2008. Okay, well, keep it. How, talk, talk to me about the Arizona Community Foundation's involvement in the Black Philanthropy Initiative. Absolutely. Well, Arizona Community Foundation's mission is to lead, serve, collaborate, to mobilize enduring philanthropy for a better Arizona. And ACF truly recognizes that everyone in this community matters. So it's very important to spearhead an initiative like this that wasn't existing anywhere else in our entire state. And so the mission of, of the Black Philanthropy Initiative is to lead, uh, help build capacity and support sustainable programming to serve African Americans in this community. And so this is a wonderful opportunity to engage African Americans in Arizona and other interested Arizonans and to become philanthropists and to support this mission of creating fair and equitable opportunities in education, access to health, uh, workforce development opportunities, and so on. And so that's why uh, we're, we're really engaged. And we have a goal of $1 million to reach by 2015. And at that time, we will have grant cycles and begin to make awards in the community to organizations that are either led by African Americans or are serving the African American community. So what is your strategy for building up the money? Well, we have a variety of strategies. Uh, one good example is, I won't mention their name, but a well-known minister in town. He has a legacy fund. And that means that at the time of his death, he and his wife will contribute an extraordinary sum of resources uh, to the Black Philanthropic Initiative. There are also other opportunities where people have an opportunity to give and they might have an interest in not only the African American community, but say STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, and math type of education. And they can donate to the BPI relative to STEM. There are also affinity groups, you know, like uh, the Boule, for example, the uh, fraternities and sororities and other community organizations that provide scholarships. And those organizations can make contributions to the Black Philanthropic Initiative. So uh, the sky's the limit in, in terms of people's ability to provide resources and opportunities and vehicles and conduits to support the Black Philanthropic Initiative. So, so Kiva, you had mentioned um, once you get the money, how mm -hmm. this is with, how you would be distributing it, or that you would be. Well, how does that work, and what is the process that you use for making the awards um, in the community? And, and also, who will be eligible? Sure. So um, who will be eligible will, will be any nonprofit serving the African-American community, or again, led by an African-American uh, executive director or president and CEO. And so this will somehow indirectly the in it support the entire community just by uh, targeting a specific population in our community, blacks in Arizona, to uh, give them opportunities and to have uh, nonprofit services available to them. And so if I can also backtrack a little bit, um, under Jean's uh, recommendation to have this initiative to be a very targeted approach to Arizona's black community, the ACF leadership truly embraced this and decided this was very important to convene uh, some local African-American leaders, uh, take advantage of their expertise, as well as resources that we have in internally on our staff to support this initiative. And so uh, throughout the year, I meet with a group of local African-American leaders to provide direction and um, give me some support on how to continue to move this forward. And so as we continue uh, to do our work and beginning next year sometime, we will then uh, have an RFP call out um, for a grant cycle for 
all nonprofits who fit that eligibility to make an application. And then we will have a committee, again, with community people uh, to make the decisions on where those dollars will go and where um, their most persistent need is in the African American community. Now, one more thing, though. You had mentioned that you don't have to have a lot of money. You mm -hmm. said my, my little $10, of course, it would be more. But my, my money and, and others' monies would be welcome. Yes. So. I, I think that that's very important because there are a lot of people out there who really want to give and support what's happening in the community. Mm -hmm. So, Michael, did you want to? Yeah, that? I've, I've, uh, that, that's a great uh, segue to the fact that in 2009, leading to a report that was done in 2010, what we did is a survey and a thousand people in the you know, Phoenix and, and Arizona community responded to a survey about African American giving. There are myths associated that African Americans are not philanthropic, mm -hmm. but we have been for a long time. And one of the best examples I can give is the African American church. So in the African American church, there's always been a building fund that, that mm -hmm. many people contribute to. But folks give of their time and talent by being that safety net in the community for social, social services, you know, by providing uh, you know, food to the hungry, clothing to the needy, but, but also by making financial contributions. And we put together a uh, booklet that relates to African-American giving, philanthropic giving, uh, in 2010 uh, that one can access on our website. Great. Well, we're going to come back. We uh, have two more people that we want to talk to about the Black Philanthropy Initiative. And come back so you can get more information on this very important program. And we're in the offices of the Arizona Community Foundation talking about the Black Philanthropy Initiative. And with me is Michael Kelly, Kevin Womble, Robin Kola Kulan, and SN02. And I'm just very excited about this initiative because finally there's something that focuses on what our needs are in the community as black organizations. And during our first part of the program, Kiva mentioned the task force, the Black Initiative, um, Philanthropy Initiative Task Force. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the Black Philanthropy Initiative was a brainchild of Michael Kelly and Jean Fairfax, and we came together as a group of African American leaders, people concerned about some of the issues in our community, and w looking at ways that we could support nonprofits, doing the good work out there, raise some funds, and uh, see the types of changes we want to see in our community through financial power. And um, I'm very proud to serve on the Black Philanthropy Initiative as well as with Michael Kiva and uh, well, a host of other really very comp uh, competent, uh, very capable, um, just uh, inspiring mm -hmm. folks. Um, and our goal is to raise a million dollars. We're working on that, and um, I don't know if there's anything mm -hmm. you want to add, Asen. Yeah, I, I think the task force, as, as was already stated, is a, a really great um, sort of uh, combination of individuals and skills that all bring some really unique talents to the table to help move this initiative along. Um, it, it's multi-generational, it's, uh, which I think is, is strategic in its, in its um, structure. So it's really creating a pipeline, I think, in terms of philanthropy in our black community, uh, which is a, a great goal for us, and it's, it's something we've set out to do as a task force. Um, I've been on the task force for about three years, and um, my wife and I uh, were early contributors, if you will, um, to the fund as well, to the Black Philanthropy Initiative Fund. So we've, we've sort of made it a family affair, if you will, and now um, she's part of the uh, Black Women's Giving Circle, Giving and Empowerment Circle, excuse right. me, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But Yeah, this is uh, a little bit. I do want to so back perfect. up a minute sure. and say something about the Black Philanthropy Initiative. It has been, as I serve uh, as a board member for the Arizona Community Foundation as well, and it does, we have full support of the Arizona Community Foundation in terms of its asset base, uh, its staff, in terms of what we need to really get our message out to the community. So I'd like to say that we are an initiative, but the umbrella is through the Arizona Community Foundation. Okay, so now 
the giving circles? Um, what, what is that? The giving circles are a little bit different. Uh, I was inspired, I don't know about a son, but I was inspired by one of our uh, other task force members, Terry Love, who comes from Birmingham, Alabama. And he was part of a giving circle called the Birmingham Change Fund. And when he started talking about their giving circle and the power of collective giving and how to leverage uh, our financial power within the black community, it really inspired me. So we did a little research. There were several uh, uh, other members, uh, Carolyn Bristow, Chapman, and Patricia Crenshaw, and I, we looked at uh, the black women in our community and we decided to form a giving circle. We call it the African American Women's Giving and Empowerment Circle. Uh, we have uh, 10 to 12 uh, founding members, but I think we have approximately 14 or 15 mm -hmm. women signed up as of uh, now, as of today. But we're looking to grow to about 25 uh, women. Uh, we are looking at a purpose. We're looking at the empowerment of women and girls here in Arizona. Um, and we uh, obviously we have a financial goal we want to reach. We are a special fund, I should say a donor advised fund within the Arizona Community Foundation. So that means we can say how we want our money spent. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the financial commitment is going to help us raise funds, but we're not just about the money. We are about giving of our time, of our talents. Uh, you know, it's uh, rewarding to get together with women like Allison, Ascend's wife, and the other women because we come from all different professions, work experiences, ages. We're nonpartisan, but we have a focus on empowering women and girls. We have a financial goal, and we want to make grants to the community to see the impact of our desires. We want to see the change that we uh, envision in our community, and we are willing to put our dollars there. Like I said, there's a financial commitment, uh, but I think at this point, uh, everything is pretty flexible. We're asking all interested Arizonans to uh, make a commitment and support the Black Philanthropy Initiative, if, particularly if they have an interest of um, being very targeted to serving uh, nonprofits that that will serve the African American community as long as well as other communities but we're, we're looking uh, at everyone in Arizona locally we're looking regionally and we're looking hoping to have some national support there are some wonderful national organizations foundations that have uh, resources that they'd like to get out into the community and if they don't have a footprint here or boots on the ground here we're a great conduit to uh, be an intermediary to dispel to, to disperse those funds into the local community here so we're looking at and hoping that we will find uh, matching grant opportunities or for anyone if, if we have a special interest or a grant cycle for education that someone who is just concerned about with the welfare of children learning that they'll want to support this because again Indirectly, if the African American community thrives, indirectly, so does the, the whole community will thrive. Okay. But but in the interest of gender equality, uh, even though there's a, a women's giving circle, as Santa has put together a, an African American men's giving circle, and, yes. and he, he can articulate that a lot better than I can. Yeah. I do. And, and uh, Robin said something that I think important uh, a few minutes ago about being inspired by one of our other task force members, uh, Terry Love, who's actually part of, uh, of the Giving Circle, uh, the men's end. We're a little bit behind the ball, if you will, so the women have beat us to the punch on this, but we have started um, a black men's giving circle um, called REAP. And REAP stands for uh, Real Empowerment Through Active Philanthropy. What is it that they need to do or we need to do as a community and as a circles of sisters who meet and brothers who meet? How do we get involved? Or you can even create your own. I will do that. <laughs> I, bet that I like that even better. No, really. That, that's, oh, oh. You can like contact any one of us, Kiva, yes. myself, Asin. Uh, we're available. Michael, we're available to talk to you about the options here. Uh, but we're really excited, so please contact the, even the Arizona Community Foundation call and say we want more information about the Giving Circles. We'll be happy to provide whatever information people might need. Okay. And specifically, I'll even uh, be happy to share my information, uh, being one of the advisors here on staff. I, I'm happy to take phone calls. My number is 602 
682-2044 or if you happen to go to our website which is azfoundation.org there's some wonderful information about the Black Philanthropy Initiative as well as our giving circles and you can find my contact information there as well. Well thank you absolutely so much for the work that you're doing. It's so so needed and I, I honor and, and praise each and every one of you. Thank you so much. When we come thank back. Thank you. When we come back, we're going to talk to Charlene Tara and get another another perspective on black philanthropy. Planet Earth, the home of countless wonders of almost 7 billion human beings. Around 149 million square kilometers of Earth. Have you ever wondered how much of this area actually belongs to you? Twenty-two thousand square meters. That's your share of the Earth an anomalous piece of land. Well, not anymore. What if you could locate it, own it, protect it, visit it, turn it into a gift? That is what we do at YES. We try to bring the Earth closer to your heart. streak in life didn't begin with a ranch I'd always imagined. It didn't begin when I bought my very first horse. Or with a ten-gallon hat I was thirsting for. It began with a hope and a dream. And, of course, that wonderful winning ticket. The Arizona Lottery. You can't win if you don't play. Thanks for coming back. I'm Fatima Halim, and we're here at the offices of the Arizona Community Foundation. And we're talking about black philanthropy. Uh, we mentioned during the course of our conversation that they had a series called Feed Your Soul, or they have a series called Feed Your Souls. But last week, they did one. And they did one with Charlene Tara as the keynote speaker. And Charlene is with me again today as she's going to talk to us a little bit about what she talked about. And, Charlene, tell me about um, how important is it for me to establish some type of a fund for my family? Well, <clears throat> the first thing I want to say is that, one, I want to acknowledge the Arizona Community Foundation for what they're doing, because I think the Black Philanthropy Initiative, it is a one-of-a-kind initiative here in the Valley. I applaud them because typically when you start talking about race-based giving, there are a lot of people that are somewhat uh, perplexed by that. Why would you want to earmark dollars exclusively to a particular race over another race? And when we talk about how do you make a difference to your estate plan, I think part of, of what we really want to do is encourage people to create a will or a trust. That's the first thing. And as you're sitting down and you're thinking about where you want your assets to to go. We're going to be thinking about our family and about the causes that matter to us, about the organizations we support. So whether that's your church, your sorority, your women's circle, your rites of passage program, and, and, and your children, we're thinking about how do we use what we've acquired in order to continue my legacy, if you will. Um, so first things first, you got to have at least a will or a trust in order to do that. The second thing is, as we start thinking about the charitable portion of that, how much do you actually want to leave to charity? And what's going to be the most effective way of doing that? Some people want to make a gift to charity and they need income off of that gift. Others don't necessarily need the income. Some folks may want to gift a life insurance policy. Some may want to gift real estate or you may want to gift stock or you may want to uh, gift 
artwork, appreciated artwork. So there are so many different ways that you can do that, but we need you to create at least the basic giving vehicle, and that's the estate plan documents. If you can do your planning now, don't wait for medical circumstances, health circumstances, dementia, etc., to really start thinking about what in life matters most to you. Let's and, do it now. And I, and I think what's important is that people begin to ask questions, because this is a topic that may not necessarily be an easy one. And if they have someone that they can have this discussion with, like someone like yourself, then they'll be a lot more informed and, and able to make decisions that would be best for them, their money, their families, and for those charities that they may be interested in participating in. Right? Definitely. So definitely. is there anything else that you think that we really need to know before we go? Well, <clears throat> I want to stress that, you know, we've talked a lot about earlier today about people being able to give their time, giving their talent, their services. There are so many individuals that want to make a gift and they don't know how to make the gift or maybe they don't feel that they have a sizable enough estate to be able to do that. I would strongly encourage you, call up an attorney, call up the Arizona Community Foundation and ask the question, start the conversation. You have charitable remainder trusts, lead trusts, gift annuities, charitable bequests, again, stock gifts that can be made, retained life estates that you can do. There are so many different ways that you can make a gift. You can make a gift through life insurance. You can make a gift through your retirement assets. And you don't have to be wealthy. And you don't have to be wealthy. And I think it's be, be very careful, be, um, be, uh, at least be knowledgeable of that. And that is you don't have to have a whole lot of money. Just mm -hmm. any little thing, counts. Exactly. Every little bit counts. How would someone get in contact with you, Charlene? They can actually contact my office. My telephone number is 480-538-4859 or you can reach me via email at ctarver, T-A-R, be like Victor, E-R, at tarverlaw.org. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, there you got it. Hopefully, this has provided, this particular session has provided information that will be valuable to you and that you can use. And if you have questions, please contact the Arizona Community Foundation, the Black Philanthropy Initiative, and Charlene Tarver. Thanks for joining us again on Focus. Bye-bye. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the show today. Fatima, Halim did a great job and we want to thank her guests as always. And speaking of always, if you'd like to communicate with us, we can still, you can still write to us. At Focus, P.O. Box 33697, Phoenix, Arizona 85067. Or if you'd like to email us, please email to us at the address that's on the screen. I hope you got all that information off the screen. As always, we want to thank you for joining us today. I know we're going to be back next week with more informative information on Focus. On behalf of Fatima Aline, Tony Escobar, and myself, Vernon L. Bowen, we want to thank you for joining Focus this week. Look for us next week, same time, same station, when Focus continues. <laughs>